Fire from Heaven. This podcast is a sample Bible study using the mobile version of Accordance Bible software. Hi, I'm Dr. J, host of Lighting the Lamp. Today we'll be doing a simple Bible study together in 1 Kings 18 and 19, where Elijah calls down fire from heaven. In the course of the story, we'll be traveling from Mount Carmel to the Valley of Jezreel to Beersheba and finally to Mount Horeb. We'll use accordance to help us understand each of these biblical locations and how they add to the story. By the time we're done, I hope you'll be inspired to use accordance during your own journeys. This particular episode is especially for those who are brand new to Accordance Mobile. All you need to follow along is the free version of Accordance for iOS, which includes our starter set of modules. It's available here on Apple's App Store. The resources we're going to use today are very simple. An English Standard Version of the Bible, tagged with Strong's Key Numbers, courtesy of Crossway Publishers. We're also going to be using five Bible study tools, Easton's Bible Dictionary, Strong's Hebrew Dictionary, and samples of our own Biblical Maps, Timeline, and Photo Guide. Of course, we have many other Bibles and study tools available for purchase. If you decide you like Accordance, we hope you'll invest in some of your favorites on our platform then you'll always have them available wherever you are. Effective Bible study uses the same basic three-step technique common to all research. Identify, investigate, and evaluate. The first step selects the target passage or part of a passage. The second is where we gather information. The third step, evaluate, is where we synthesize the results of our investigation and adjust our understanding in the passage in the light of it. In a devotional study, this is also where we ask what kind of personal response we should make. Now, without further ado, let's study the Bible in accordance. Identify. The passage we're going to look at today is 1 Kings 18 and 19, the one where Elijah calls fire down from heaven in a face-off with the prophets of Baal, or, as the name is often pronounced in English, Baal. The goal of the face-off? to allow the gods to demonstrate which one has the greater power. The story begins here, in verse 1 of chapter 18. Let me underline it for you. Now, if you're not familiar with this story, I'd encourage you to pause the podcast here and read 1 Kings 18 and 19 in their entirety. Investigate To sum up the story's events, Elijah challenges Baal's prophets to call down fire from heaven to consume a sacrifice placed on the altar on top of Mount Carmel. Despite their best efforts from dawn until dusk, they fail to do so. Elijah then repairs the altar of God, soaks the wood and sacrifice with water so no one could later cry foul, and prays a simple prayer of about 60 words. Fire falls from heaven and consumes the sacrifice. Elijah then commands the people to kill the false prophets, which they do, provoking Queen Jezebel's wrath. Our investigation today is into the places mentioned in this story, so I'm going to highlight each one. Mount Carmel, where Elijah confronts the prophets of Baal, then orders their deaths. Jezreel, where Queen Jezebel threatens to kill Elijah after hearing her own prophets are dead. Beersheba, to which Elijah flees and where he leaves his servant. The wilderness, where the prophet cries out to God in discouragement, and where he is fed by angels. And ultimately, Mount Horeb, where Elijah hears the voice of God and is recommissioned. The first thing we want to do is to determine a chronological context for this story. A date. Since Ahab is an Israelite king, he ought to appear in the Bible timeline, in the section called Israelite Kings. By enlarging this section of the timeline, I can see that he reigned about 875 to around 850 or so BCE, approximately the same time that Jehoshaphat reigned in Judah. This confrontation must have taken place sometime during that 25-year span. Now, let's find out more about these various geographical contexts. I'm going to copy the name Carmel from Instant Details, and search for the article on it in Easton's Bible Dictionary. It turns out that Mount Carmel was a park, orchard, or perhaps a vineyard, renowned for its fertility. 
Now, since Baal was a fertility god, this challenge took place in what was supposed to be the center of his territory. While we're here in Easton, let's look up the rest of these place names. Jezreel was situated on the edge of the Valley of Jezreel, which was also a very fertile valley in ancient times, even as it is today, with abundant grain and agriculture. Beersheba, a place with seven wells, was about as far south as one could be and still be in the land of Israel, as evidenced by the phrase Dan to Beersheba, which indicates the whole of Israel. Perhaps most importantly, Beersheba was under the control of the southern kingdom of Judah, not Ahab and Jezebel. Now Mount Horeb is especially significant. It turns out to be the same as Sinai, the place where Moses was given the Ten Commandments. It seems that the author of Kings avoided the name Sinai, perhaps because of its association with the moon goddess in his time. Now, let's go to the map sampler where we can see all these places in relation to each other. Since this is a podcast and you can't see my finger when I point to the various places, I'll overlay Elijah's route here using a diagram. We can clearly see Mount Carmel at the top left, Elijah's race east to meet Ahab and Jezreel, his flight south to Beersheba, his journey into the wilderness of the Negev, and his final destination, Sinai. Now, let's add some pictures to our study, which is a wonderful way to bring a Bible study to life. Accordance's Photo Guide 3 is an outstanding module with over 1,600 high-quality photos of biblical places in alphabetical order, and I highly recommend it for purchase. This sampler only covers a handful of places, and we can clearly see here that Mount Carmel is not among them. Fortunately, I visited Mount Carmel in March of this year and can substitute a photo of my own, which clearly shows just how fertile Mount Carmel and the surrounding region is. The three-year drought would have probably dried up the plain you see below, but Mount Carmel itself would have retained the greenery you can see here. What a location for this face-off. The sampler does have an article on Beersheba, in the far south of Israel. It references this story. Here's one of its famous seven wells, and you can see from this photo that the surrounding area is still far drier than Mount Carmel. The article on Jezreel is also missing from this sampler. However, this gives me an opportunity to share a little trick we can do in accordance. If we come up empty when searching the entry field of a resource, we can then try to search the English content field by switching it, like so. This article is on Megiddo, which lies south and west. However, this photo from the top of the mountain looks north and east across the valley of Jezreel. The city of Jezreel would have been somewhere off to the far right. Thankfully, Mount Horeb, or that is Sinai, does appear in this sampler. Notice just how rugged and intimidating the region is, a stark contrast to the lush greenery of the first mountain in our story. Here is where Elijah finally hears the voice of God. Evaluate In the course of this story, Elijah travels from Mount Carmel, to Jezreel, to Beersheba, and finally to Mount Horeb, which is Sinai. How does our study of these locations influence our understanding of the text? While we are often drawn to the miraculous in this story, the fire from heaven is not the point. The point of the story is that God reigns in all these locations, not being confined, as they imagined the Baals to be, just to specific places. He is king of the fertile hills and valleys, but also of the wilderness and even the most desolate regions, equally capable of revealing himself in all of them. I hope you've enjoyed this Bible study as much as I have. Investigating biblical places is just one of the many Bible study techniques employed in accordance. In the months to come, we'll be airing other Bible studies that showcase more techniques. I hope you'll join us. All of us here at Accordance trust you will enjoy our free app and that it will lead you into a deeper study of God's Word. Be sure to share the good news about our app with your friends. We also have a more powerful desktop version if you'd also like to check it out. A free trial copy is located here at accordancebible.com slash trial. This has been Dr. J for Accordance Bible Software. Thank you for watching this episode 
of lighting the lamp.